Hello everybody and welcome back to the next video in my full note taking app course using Swift and core data. In the last video we started work on the viewcontroller.swift file and we left off with the pick image button was pressed function. Today we will be continuing this file as well as addressing some issues that have been pointed out by some of my viewers in the comments and just some things that have come up since the last video. We'll start with our uh, recommendations. As you can see, conversion to Swift 4 is available. It's been a couple months since I last released a video, so we've had some Xcode updates, some iOS updates, and there is a new conversion available. All we're going to do is we're going to just click on it, make sure your target is selected, click next, leave this in the recommended setting, click next, and now we will wait for the preview to be generated and we will finish our conversion. Save. And our conversion is complete. The next thing we're going to address is this, update to recommended settings. This isn't too important and it's not really necessary to finish our app, but just to make it go away, we'll perform the build changes, and now those two recommendations are gone. Now we only have two more errors to address. The first one is, value of type UI table view cell has no member configure cell. Now this was actually a mistake on my part. The reason that it doesn't recognize the member configure cell is because it doesn't recognize the cell because it cannot find the cell class. As you can see, when we create the cell variable, we don't state the class anywhere, so it has no access to it and the function configure cell. In order to fix this, it's really simple. All we have to do is write as and then the name of our class, which I believe is note table view cell. And our last error we're going to look at is this one, value of type UI text field has no member set bottom border. This one we still can't fix because it requires a function that we will be creating at the very end of this video. So let's just start right where we left off. Just a quick reminder that I will continue copying and pasting most of our code to make sure that the video doesn't take too long. Our next function is the image picker controller. Picker UI image picker controller did finish picking with media with info and we pass in our string, our info of the data. This function is called when we choose the photo and we confirm our selection. What we're going to do is we're going to dismiss the picker, obviously, and then we are going to set our note image view to have the image that we just selected in the UI image picker. Pretty straightforward. And the same goes for the next one that we're about to insert into our view controller file. The image picker controller did cancel. This is called when you press the cancel button and all it really does is just dismiss it without setting the image. Our next function is going to be a little bit longer and it's going to be a little bit more complex, but I will explain everything so you can understand more or less what it's trying to say, the general idea of it. This is our save function and the way we do it is with an IB action func save button was pressed with the sender of a UI bar button item which if you remember is the way our save button is um, displayed. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the note name is empty or the default or if the description is empty or the default because that means that the user either forgot to enter something or didn't enter it on purpose. What we're going to do is we're going to create an alert controller with the title of missing information and a message of you left one or more fields empty to remind them that they need to fill in all the fields before saving. 
we're going to add an action called OK action, which is a UI alert action with a title of dismiss. And all this really does is just dismiss the alert controller. Self.present alert controller animated true. We do want it to be animated and completion nil. No. This is the way we're going to present it after we have created it and added our dismiss action. Now if they're not empty or default, so basically if all the information is valid, we are going to continue to the actual saving. Now if you remember, this boolean right here is existing. We created earlier in the previous video most likely and it checks to see if the note is already existing or not. Now what happens is when you click on a note that's already existing, it passes in the variable of is existing as true when you click on it. If it doesn't pass it in, it is automatically set as false. So if is existing as false, or if it's a brand new note, we are going to create a variable for our note name and note description with the text in the note name label and the note description label. We are going to check the manage object context. Let note is note with the context of our manage object context which we created right here. We're going to check to see that the data is valid and we're going to um, enter the data of the image into the note dot note image value, which if you remember is one of our parameters in our core data. We do the same thing for note name and note description. We just set the note name and the note description to be the variables we created at the very beginning. And finally, we're going to save to core data. And this is the code that's going to close the detail view controller and first we create a variable to check if it's presenting an add note mode which basically means if it's presenting from a UI navigation controller now the reason we do that is because the reason we do that is because when you are adding a new note from the add button you actually first go through a navigation controller which then goes to a node detail view if you are simply clicking on the note, you go straight to it. So using this, we can figure out if we need to dismiss, if we need to dismiss the view controller, which will dismiss the view controller and the navigation controller before it, or if we need to pop the view controller, which means we're going to remove this one and we are going to display the view controller right below this one in the stack. Now, if existing is true, which means we are editing it, we are going to do something slightly different. First of all, we are going to create our note variable from self.note, our core data. Um, we're going to create our manage object to be set as note. And instead of setting the... And instead of setting the values in our core data, we are going to edit them by using set value and um, passing in our note name label and note description label or the text of those two labels for the keys of note name and note description which are the names of those corresponding values in our core data and we do the same thing for the note image as well set value data which is the UI image G JPEG representation of our image in our image view for the key of note image. Next we do a do try to make sure that there's no issues and that do try we're going to save the context and we're going to do the same thing that we did above to see whether we need to pop the view controller or whether we need to dismiss it and here's the catch part of our do try segment and if there's an error we're simply going to write failed to update an existing note which will help us if that actually happens which we will catch 
in the debug log when we were running the app. Now we have a little error here, use of unresolved identifier context. That we will address a little bit later, because right now we're going to be finishing our view controller class. The next function is a lot less complex, and it is the cancel function, still very important. And it's also an IB action, which has the center of UI bar button item. The only difference is that instead of saving it, it simply checks to see whether to pop it or dismiss it, and it does one of the following to simply close the detail view controller. Now, the next couple of functions are actually going to be related to the text field and the text view. The first one is func text field should return. This one is very simple. This checks for when the user presses the enter button on the text field, and we're just going to resign the first responder, which means we're going to hide the keyboard. The next function is the should change text in NS range replacement text text string. So basically, this is going to be checking for if we change the text. And if the text that we enter happens to be slash n, which if you remember is a line break, or if they press the return button while editing the text view for our description, it's going to also resign the first responder or hide the keyboard. The last one we are going to have is also having to do with our text view. Funk text view did begin editing. If the text view dot text is no description, then we're going to set the text to be blank. Basically, all this is going to do is if the text view says the default text, when the user clicks on it, they don't have to delete it because it deletes it for them. That is it for our main body code, and we're finally going to add in the extension UI text field at the very, very bottom. Now this extension is, if you did not guess already, is responsible for setting the sort of bottom border that we see on the text field in the app. Now this extension only has one function, func set bottom border. And basically, first thing it does is it takes off the border style and it sets the background color of the text field that's being modified with this function to be white. After that, we set, we set the masks to bounds value to be false in order to show the shadow. And then we create a really small solid shadow right below the text field to be our uh, peachish color that acts sort of as a border for the bottom of the text field. As you can see, that got rid of one of our errors. One of them we still have right here. Now the answer to this problem is going to lie in the app delegate.swift file at the very bottom. Now what I neglected to do in my app delegate video is to add two very important variables that were going to be used globally throughout the app. The first one is let app delegate and basically what it's doing is it's creating a variable of the app delegate to be used in the app. And the next one is the context which is the view context of the persistent container of the app delegate which is the variable right here. This is the variable that we were using in the view controller right here. So unless I'm wrong, this error should go away momentarily. Now, another error has come up while we were doing this, and that was this one right here. Cannot assign value of type string any object to type ns attributed string key any. So what we're going to do here is we are going to replace this chunk of code right here with a different working chunk of code that was actually given to me in the comments section of my latest video by one of my viewers. I would like to thank them for bringing this to my attention. 
with iOS 11 it is done slightly differently and I will show you those changes right now the first change is that instead of string any object it should be ns attributed string key any object and the second thing we're going to change is that we're going to remove the raw value the dot raw value from each of these lines so we'll just simply have the dot font and dot foreground color and that should remove our error so now with a quick build product and build we should be able to get rid of our errors and now we finally have a working version of the app however it will still crash when you try to build it because we are still missing our fonts and it will not look the way it should because we haven't done any styling so that is what we're going to be doing in the next video thank you so much for watching this video please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and found it useful please check out the rest of the series if you haven't watched it yet and keep on the lookout for the next episode, which will hopefully be coming very soon.